My name is Sean Gagan and welcome to the WIT Viking Profile Series on Viking CV, a series dedicated to profiling coaches, players, students and alumni from WIT. Today our guest during this very special sport in society this week is a Warford IT and Wexford Camogie legend. She won four All-Ireland Senior Championships, nine All-Star Awards and two Ashburn Cup titles. She is a business person, Gaelic Games pundit, coach and a proud mother. Welcome to the one and only Kay Kelly. Thanks for coming on, Kay. Thanks, Sean. Delighted to be joining you. Uh, we'll start off your, with your time in Warford IT, Kate. You've been a student, athlete and employee at WIT. Can you talk us through your journey so far in the college? Yeah, um, I suppose I came to WIT back in the late 90s and uh, settled in very well when I joined the Ashburn Camogie team and uh, made a lot of my like, lifelong friends through it. Um, uh, college was college, but I suppose like most sporting students coming through college, uh, the playing with the college was everything for me and... Uh, we were very successful. The first year we played, we won in Ashburn, which was special. And I suppose maybe we didn't realize the enormity of it when I was um, in first year because I really didn't know much about Ashburn. And um, But we've seen it through the older players. They had been striving for so long to try win it. The following year, we probably had a better team and everyone expected us to win and it didn't happen. But um, we won when I was in third year and that was probably one of the most special experiences I ever had as part of a team. Um, we didn't have the big names. We didn't have much of the, I suppose, favoritism. Uh, wasn't expected at all. We played Cork before Christmas. We lost by 23, 24, 25 points and uh, turned that around in in, um, in the in the February championship. And, you know, Sean, I suppose I always look back on that, that one championship that we won and epitomizes working on a team. And when they say that a team can move mountains when you get them to work with one aim um, and that that's always been a special team that I won on because as I said we weren't favorites we didn't have all the big names but we got there over uh, sheer team spirit and and that probably epitomizes and sums up my life in WIT I really enjoyed on um, being part of the Camogie team I played a bit of football and um, got involved with management after that Sean and uh um, for my sins, I'm still in WIT, working away in the business um, uh, with, with Novus, and we kind of look after, overlook the sport, food and beverage and accommodation at WIT. So, as you know, I'm still hanging around um, at WIT and, and enjoying my time there. And we enjoy having you, Kate. Um, you, mentioned the, you mentioned the two Ashburn Cup title wins. Um, how big of an impact do you think that had on your future success in the sport? I think it had a huge impact because when you go to college camogie and you go to college sport, whatever um, whatever sport it is, I think that frames you as a person. When you're at home, it's a lot of your parents pushing you and telling you you've training this evening. And up until that point, you're brought to training. It's what you should do. And when you go to college, I think it's your own decision. You'll see a lot of players, either camogie, soccer, whatever sport they're in. And when they get to college, it's their decision whether they want to play or not. And, you know, you, you will see that some players opt not to play and some do and do you know what I opted to play and it was probably the most enjoyable teams that I ever played with because everyone was there on their own merit people were getting up at seven o'clock in the morning and they could have been out the night before but they wouldn't let the girls down and I think that epitomizes um, everything there is good about playing part of a team but it also I think as a learning curve for my career going forward it showed you that, you know, you can be part of a committed team. And once you get that spirit and uniqueness in a team, that you really can achieve what your goals and dreams are. And I suppose I always dreamt that I wanted to play for Wexford and win All-Irelands. But I think that period in my career really, really developed me as a player and as an individual that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't part of the club that I was coming from. But I came from a bigger learning. I, like I was bouncing off players from Tip, Cork, uh, Kilkenny, Wexford, even girls from Roscommon, um, Galway, and and we did have a really really special bond, and you know they're friends that I have for life. I have to say, when I came into the college, I had no idea about your your past playing career. Yeah, it shows the kind of where my head was at. But until, until I saw you on TV one day, on RT, nine All Star awards, like the LeBron James of Camogie, and then a, a glittering a glittering career. Um, how did you combine that with family life and work and all those things? Um, I, I suppose it, it like came second nature to me. I was always very committed and dedicated and it didn't bother me to kind of make the choice to play. 
I was passionate about it and I think that drove me on a lot and the motivation to win and I was lucky as well coming up through underage in my club we kind of had a unique bunch of girls um we had a group of maybe nine ten friends and like 70 percent of us were like fairly well skilled so we kind of won a lot coming up along and we really got the buzz and the kick out of that so like combining it all together it's just been part of my life it's just been part of like getting up and having to have your breakfast in the day I just it, it's always been part of my work life and I really enjoyed I wouldn't really it's a hobby but you know I, I wouldn't go without it either so I wouldn't give it up as a hobby I really do enjoy it and I think that's what majority of people if they do have a passion and really enjoy it they'll stay with the sport they'll stay with the you know whatever capacity it's in like obviously I, I'm not really playing at the minute so I enjoyed a bit of coaching I enjoy being over the under 18 team um, I enjoy being part of different committees and, and developing the game so I, I just think it's part of what I grew up um, knowing and loving and I got a lot of that from my parents to be honest. Going into your inter-county career Kate you won the first All-Ireland senior Camogie title with Wexford in 32 years in 2007 Tell us about that year and the emotions and feelings after the win. Um, I suppose, to be honest, you can really see it on my face. Like even just uh, memorising or thinking back to that period, it was just such a special time. Like um, Wexford didn't exactly, we're not the Kilkenny's of this world, we're not the Cork. So as you said, we didn't win in 32 years. And at the time, like we never thought we wouldn't win. We always thought we won. We won a minor All Ireland back in ninety, uh, you know, as a group of minors. And then people went travelling, and you know, like Wexford went through a period in the five years before that where they were nearly pulling a senior team because we couldn't compete. We were being beaten by twenty six points or whatever. But in the two years before that, we kind of had come together as a group, and everyone was returning home from their travels, and you know, kind of was like. People were saying, are we going to do this or, or, you know, let it pass? So in the years before, I think we had got to a league finals and different things. So we really knew we were up there and, and could achieve it. And and 2007, um, new manager Stella came in. I think that gave us a new lease of life. Um, someone new to prove ourselves to and just everything came together. And I'd have to say um, what a, a, a brilliant experience from playing in Crow Park to the games leading into it, like we were beaten well in a couple of games early in the championship as well. But I don't think that that, that like knocked our confidence in any way that we were going to win in All Ireland. And it's just such a special year. And like even from the time the whistle went and we won, the the I suppose the acknowledgement and the support and the welcome home that we got was second to none. And I suppose maybe in the year after that, Sean, it was that special. Like we were still celebrating the following May. We were bringing the cup to schools and to pubs and that. And like probably was our downfall in the following year. But you know what? I, I still wouldn't take it back for how special that year was. It, we really were on cloud nine in the 2008 championship. Like it was so hard to comprehend. And it was so hard to even like I remember my mom saying to me after the All Ireland, you know, take it easy today. It's going to be a big day going back to Wexford. And we were like, yeah, yeah, like there'll be a few people. And we came in under Gory and there was people lying the street. I don't know if you're familiar with Gory, but we came in under the bridge and there's people lying the street on each side. And as players, we were going mad. Why won't they let us off the bus? A few people has come out to see us. And they were like, no, no, you have to stay on the bus. And we were like, this is ridiculous. Like, and we turned the corner and the street was just a, a just a maze of people and like we were like just from that moment on the way home we really realized like what we'd achieved like not really what we'd achieved but just the support we got from the Wexford people and every town village and crossroad on the way down there was bonfires there was people with flags teams supporters and uh, you know it was just a really really special time. After that original SSD then won the three in a row between 2010 and 2012 I'm really interested to know the kind of the mentality and the environment within the change room for that repetitive success. It's almost a, a mini dynasty. So what was the what was the mentality between between teammates and everything that in the change room? Yeah, like I suppose it was completely different to 2007. Um, 2007, it was a first. We didn't know what we were experiencing. We didn't know how it was going to go. We didn't expect what we got 
in the homecoming or whatever. But then we let 2008 and 2009 slip and we knew we were probably one of the best teams out there. And I think you'd have to say the management were very focused. We got a new management in that year and, and they were very driven and focused and brought a new kind of edge to the team. Um, it brought everyone back to square one and everyone was proving themselves again. And I think that was a key driver in winning those. And they were focused on every year, every game was just one game. And, you know, there was no, like, I, I think we experienced it in 2007, the, the celebrations. It wasn't a first, Sean. It was three years from the 2007, 2010. So very quickly in the 2011 championship, we were back focused and kind of the cup was sent back. And that was the end of that. And, yeah, it was um, a very focused and driven team. Very kind of, you know, very, I suppose, you once you win one and you, you experience it, there is a winning habit. And I would say in that period, 10, 11 and 12, we were a really focused team like the Kilkenny's of this world. That Once you get into that winning momentum, it's it, it, winning is a habit. And we were very much in it then. And it was just brilliant. Like I remember playing games and I don't know how we won them. We were down by maybe six, seven points leading in. But just the sheer belief in ourselves, we got over the line and got got the result and it does come with a winning habit and it was great to kind of experience that kind of team environment as well. You then transitioned to your punditry career on RTE after your playing career. How did you find that transition from going from on the pitch to on the radio and in front of the TV cameras? Yeah, well, uh, I suppose a completely different experience and uh, the first couple of times maybe was a little bit more shy and, and kind of um, apprehensive about, you know, what you'd say or whatever, but really, really enjoy it. I enjoyed the analysis of the game and I suppose at RTE and, and at that level of getting the opportunity to be there, it's just a whole new level. Like I've done it at local radio, I've done it, you know, and you just don't have the same detail, uh, you don't have the same supports around you and... Uh, no, I really enjoyed the punditry, especially the, the radio with um, Park Lodge. A uh, great experience and a great guy to be co-commentating with. On top of that, you're also a founding member of the Women in Gaelic Player Association who have recently amalgamated with the Gaelic Player Association. How big of a step do you think that was in improving the equality between the men's and women's codes? Um, I think it's a, a momentous kind of um, a step because, like, realistically, um, the, the historic way that the GA is, is, is formed and run, like, a lot of people don't realise that both ladies' associations are completely separate associations and the men's is a separate association. So I suppose that in itself, like, there's different standards because they're different associations, but this is kind of bringing them together and it's the top players in every county um, I suppose the role models of our sport, the role models that are out there um, sending the message and they're sending the message that, you know, we're all players. It's not a female player and a male player, but I think that in itself sends out a huge message to every kid and player in the country, regardless of sport. It just shows a united front. And as a woman and as a player, uh, a female player, I think it's a, it's a huge step for ladies players going forward. And you can only see this space kind of improving more and more like the 2020 campaign, the women's GPA joining with the, ma the male counterpart, the GPA, um, a really exciting time. And it's currently going through the transitional phase of working out what that looks like putting the, the board together and, and all that. So I think it's a, it's a huge step forward for female players and um, it's a huge opportunity for female players to be on the same um, level playing field, to be seen as players and not, you know, female or male, but just seen as players out there. No, that is a, it's a massive step. To put you on the spot for the last case, or last question, Kate, um, you've had huge success in developed careers and multiple things. As we mentioned, punditry business and your playing career. What advice would you give to young athletes who are trying to compete at the highest level within their sport, but also trying to have success in different areas of life? And also having to, sorry? Also have success in different areas of life. I would say, um, if I was to give advice to younger players, I would say, I suppose, set your goals. Um, follow your passion if you're passionate about it that will drive you on a lot because you're going to have ups and downs and it's when you're on the down is when you should push through or when those obstacles kind of are, you're fronted with you're always going to be confronted with obstacles 
um, whether in your sporting career or in your business career, um, that's the time you should push on and believe in yourself. And uh, I think if you believe in yourself, have the motivation and the passion, that will take you a long way to, to being successful or being where you want to be. Okay. Thanks a million. Uh, really admire everything you're doing in sport and out of sport and everything like that. So great chat and thanks for coming on. Thanks, Sean. Enjoyed it.